Was the attempted coup in Russia Putin's failure or part of a grand plan? That's what we're going to discuss today. You're going to find out who this Wagner group is and who the leader of the Wagner group met with recently. And it is very telling of something else going on. I'm going to show you this right now because you got to know the truth. Welcome truth seekers. You came to the right place. I'm going to give you information that others simply can't. We are going to piece this together and we need to do this as a grassroots movement. So join nearly 300,000 other people that are like minded. Click that subscribe and the notification beside it so that we can conquer this together. Speaking of which, you want to know what happened with Russia. I'm going to give you some details so that you are informed beginning with this. You probably saw it. So we had this mercenary force Wagner group. They start moving in and they say, we are going to Moscow. We see tanks in the streets. All of these things start to happen. You could see the images here. Wagner mercenary group fighters pull out of the headquarters of the Southern Military District. They said at one point, we're going away. We are not going to continue on with this coup. And it happened 22 hours after it started. I was looking at this and I thought to myself, okay, I'll, I'll do a video about this if I can keep up with it all. It's changing rapidly. And then the whole thing was over. Well, I'm going to show you what happened really, really quickly. I know that a lot of you have already informed about it. Now there's some discrepancy here. Wagner leader cheered while leaving Rostov. I saw other reports saying the people were cheering. In fact, when they were leaving as as if like yeah we're so glad you're leaving like what is it exactly so we're going to get these mixed messages from details and that's why i want to show you some others look kremlin reveals details of wagner deal and so i wanted to give you the actual uh, synopsis here is uh, one article that was written about it this is just a real quick point form breakdown Charges dropped against, I'm going to try to pronounce it, Prigozhin, who will leave Russia for Belarus. Wagner fighters who didn't take part in the uprising will sign contracts with the MOD. Wagner fighters who did take part will not be charged. No word on potential MOD leadership changes. So you had Putin essentially saying, look, you are a traitor. And we do not ever, you know, deal with this well. We think that um, this is something you can't forgive. That's something that he said before. And so they're making these threats. And within a matter of what seemed like hours, just a couple hours, the whole script flips. And you had the leader of Belarus negotiating with the leader of Wagner and what happens here is the leader of Wagner says, okay, I'm now going to go to Belarus. I'm gone. I'm over here, but I'm safe. Apparently, I'm not going to be executed. And our guys are going to sign some contracts and we're going to go back to business as usual. If that wasn't the most suspicious and unusual coup attempt, I don't know what is. I really don't. I've studied the, all of these basically over the years. I've looked at this historically. I've read information about, you know, what some would consider to be extremely boring historical texts about the, uh, you know, in Greece or, in, you know, Athens, in Rome, all these old civilizations. I'm reading about all these many, many years ago, trying to learn about this. What I saw here was odd, was strange. And there's some more details that you've got to know about this. I want to give you these because I don't know if everybody necessarily are connecting the dots. Check this out. You could see it. This is one person's opinion, by the way. This is not a coup. This is an inner war between the St. Petersburg gang of Putin and Moscow gang of, uh, let me try, uh, Gerasimov and Shoigu, this is the beginning of Putin's election campaign to become re-elected on March 17th, 2024. His lapdog, 
Prigozhin is masquerading a coup to put the blame on his two leaders there for losing the war against Ukraine. Then, of course, he can be scapegoated if he fails like this happened in the past. A lot of people disagreed with that, but I wanted to bring you it because regardless of people's opinion, you will decide for yourself. Okay, but I wanted to make you think about that. So you've got these two, like, imagine like the commanders. And if the war is being lost, well, then Putin could say, ah, those were the guys. They were the problem. You know, we can fire them. We can execute them, whatever the case is. Um, and we can put the blame on them. And other people are saying that, in fact, this isn't the case. And that's not what's happening here. That this was real, this, this was official, and so on. To me, it seemed very unusual that what they would call Putin's chef, I mean, this guy was seemingly a friend for so many years, back to the 90s with Putin. I really don't think that anybody would double cross the guy, and especially if you're going to go in for a mission like this, you're saying, I'm going to Moscow. I think it's pretty clear what your intentions are. We're going to take over. We're going to make this happen. Didn't have enough troops to do that anyway. But the point is they're going in and you kind of have to, you know, imagine that circumstance. And I thought to myself, if I'm going in to do this, I'm doing it rain or shine with the likely thought that's probably not going to work out, but you know, this is what our mission is. Let's go get it done. And halfway there, you're like 120 miles out from the destination. You negotiate with another country's leader and then you somehow figure, okay, everything's going to be a okay. I mean, I really don't think so. You're saying basically you're going to take over the country. And then a few minutes later, everything's going to be okay. Why are you negotiating? I mean, that where's the negotiation to part of this? There is another detail that we're not getting out of this information. It's like, oh, well, it's a failed coup attempt. There has to be more to this story. So this is directly um, from the actual uh, government. What they said, this is uh, the TASS website. Plotters aim to destabilize Russia. According to the foreign ministry, the foreign ministry expressed the certainty. This is, by the way, after. So after everything was all in the clear. Certainty that in the near future, the situation will be resolved in a way worthy of the age-old wisdom of the Russian people and the Russian state. Um, essentially, like, bad-mouthing them. It wasn't as if, hey, these guys are all good. Basically said, like, we're going to crush you kind of thing. The plotters' adventurous aspirations are essentially aimed at destabilizing the situation in Russia, destroying our unity, and undermining Russia's efforts to reliably ensure international security. The mutiny plays into the hands of Russia's external enemies. You see what's going on here? Pointing it at the West, and it literally says, We warn the Western countries against the slightest attempts to use this internal situation for achieving their Russia-phobic Russia aims. Such attempts are futile and evoke no support either in Russia or among the soberly-minded political forces abroad. Basically saying, the West is doing something bad right now. We don't want any part of that. And the people of Russia don't want any part of that. And there's other countries that we are allied with that don't want any part of this. So that's kind of where they're putting. And there's a lot of talk that part of this was part of some grand deal to, you know, try to destabilize Russia from the inside. They, they are mercenaries. This is a group of mercenaries paid the highest bidder that they'll do whatever they need to do. But that is really up in the air. That's just a theory. We don't really know. But what we do know is this. Russian arms dealer released by Biden spotted with Wagner Group boss. Isn't that interesting? Now that is on June 13th, this article. June 13th, this information comes out very you know, near term after that, this coup attempt occurs. This is the guy, if you weren't aware, remember they did a prisoner swap where the basketball player, Brittany Griner, is swapped for the merchant of death. It made like huge news saying like, 
How can this happen? This is unbelievable. This guy isn't exactly a good guy. So at that time, these two are together. And you might be thinking, well, that's probably just some random report and so on. I'm going to show you here what it said. Victor Bout, the freed Russian arms dealer nicknamed the Merchant, Merchant of Death, was photographed with the Wagner Group boss as they took a joint trip to this particular city. Um, it, like he put that on the telegram and that would be seen, would be seen as official. It's not as if they're hiding it. It's not anything. Okay. So these two are together. And what does that tell us? I think that there's something else going on. Really? It was a joint trip. Smartest and most educated person over the many years he spent in an American prison was engaged in self-education, learned many languages, including Farsi. So I'm looking at all of this and I'm saying to myself, there's something odd going on. We don't have all the answers. We can speculate, but it seems like it could be one of two things. Could the situation be that the West has funded this group? You got this guy, you release them, maybe you make a deal with him, he starts giving the weapons, he knows where to get the weapons. They could do this all through back door, back channel sort of access, giving this guy the weapons or making it happen, giving him the funding, and then the leader of Wagner somehow make a deal with him, do all of this, it doesn't work out, you back off. Or Maybe it's part of an even more grand conspiracy where both sides are aware of the situation, but the military industrial complex is happy. Let's do all of this. So it only, you know, creates more demand for more weapons, more defense weapons, more tanks, more like all technolo uh, technological advancements, all of these things, right? Keep the war going. Oh, we're losing support for the war. Create a new event. That's one potential. The other is, you know, I mean, there's an infinite amount of potential here, but I think we discussed enough about this. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking at this and wondering what is the end goal? And in the end, who stands to gain, who benefits? It is the military industrial complex. More money will be going to the Ukraine and Russia war. We know that. More money will be spent. Who benefits? Well, the military, military contractors, weapons manufacturers, airplanes, helicopters, tanks, all of that. Now, you might be asking, who is the Wagner Group? I will cover a couple points about that. I think it is important. What is the Wagner Group? A look at the mercenary group led by a man accused of armed mutiny in Russia. Long at odds with Russia's military leaders in the war in Ukraine, Wagner Group leader took his few to a new level when he... Uh, when he leveled accusations that his fighters have been stuck and vowing revenge. The threat made over his official telegram sparked what appeared to be a crisis in Russia. So they, uh, the FSB called the private army to refuse orders and detain him. He wanted um, basically to say that this guy is a bad guy. He's having an armed rebellion. This is the coup d'etat. All right. Now, they're officially in Russia called a private military company. And U.S. Uh, calls it a, a mercenary group. So whatever you want to take from that. Founded in 2014. Also, if memory serves correctly, that was Crimea. Crimea also happened in 2014. He's 61 years old, previously known as Putin's chef for catering state events with his catering business. So it looks like he's got a couple different uh, business ventures there. All right. They have an estimated 50,000 personnel inside of Ukraine, around 10,000 contractors and 40,000 convicts from Russian prisons. That's according to the uh, US. Okay. We don't know what's true, what's not, but that's what they're saying. Instead of using the Russian narrative, according to which Wagner is a private military company, Wagner should be viewed as a classic proxy organization. It's, in my opinion, no different than what the US does or any of these other countries do. They always have proxy organizations to fight their wars and, you know, do their, do their bidding. It wouldn't surprise anybody. They've been involved in Africa. They've been involved in different places. 
around the world. There's a lot of accusations about this company, but I wanted to just bring you those details so you understand who they are, okay? And then this angle is important as well. Russia disarray means a moment of uncertainty in Beijing. China makes real China's worry, crisis makes uh, real China's worry about the Ukraine invasion would destabilize its partner against the West. So of course, China wants to have uh, very good terms with Russia. They don't want, you know, suddenly a new leader to happen. And then, uh oh, what's going on here now? The, they're suddenly so friendly with the West that they can get a new leader. How is that going to affect us? So China is certainly watching and they're making sure that everything stays a okay and everything stays status quo inside of Russia. Even if there were to be a new leader, uh, that it would be sort of, uh, you know, um, let's just say orderly change, not uh, coup d'etat. So that's one aspect that I think is worth mentioning. You've got to get your preparation in place. You've got to understand what to do. Because in this circumstance here, if there was actually a coup d'etat and suddenly your whole life is upended, well, then what are you going to do? If you work in one place and you, you live there, you're, all your business is associated there, your job and so on, you can't just get up and go. You, you'll leave everything. So people get stuck, they stay. Well, you've got to have your own uh, own income. That This is essential. Or you got to be self-sufficient. These two things are the two pillars of prosperity. I discuss it right here in this video. Click it and I'll see you there.